Ahead of presidential primaries of the all the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, uh, for the emergence of a flag bearer, former Senate leader, Senator Arlene Dume, APC Boronu South, has said that it will be unfair, an injustice, and a betrayal of trust, and a gentleman's agreement if the APC zones the presidency to the North. Meanwhile, the Northern Youth Leaders Forum has said none of the Southern presidential aspirants on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has the political will to tame Nigeria's current challenges. Well, joining us to discuss this is former President Ohane Zendibo Odozi Modozi and political commentator Mosa Idris. Engineer Idris, um, it's good to have you join us. Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, but, but very thank you. Okay, so um, let's start with your thoughts on the power rotation agreement. Um, some people will call it a gentleman's agreement. Some other people would say that um, it's not necessarily constitutional and that at this point in time, Nigerians need a good leader, not necessarily somebody from uh, a region or a zone. What are your thoughts? Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, two issues there. Uh, you can say outrightly uh, the, the, the issue at stake is, uh, is unconstitutional. You should deliberately say you want to rotate, it's unconstitutional. But you see, the other one is the issue of uh, gentleman agreement, which of course you know that uh, that's what has been played out in Nigerian politics. What the politicians normally do, they try to play in the federal character into the affairs of, uh, you know, apportioning, you know, political offices. So, as it is today, a number of uh, political, you know, people who are present in the political domain are saying that power will shift. Others are saying power must shift. If you say power will shift and it must shift, what, what, what are you really saying? You see, it's like you're not starting a particular session or a, a particular political party to deliberately eat power to a section of the country. As it is today, we all know that there are a lot of clamor for power to go to the south. Not only going to the south, but going to the southeast. If you now say that power will go to the southeast, how will you get power to go to the southeast? You see, it, it follows that it has southeast kind of beginning from their political leaders. Say, governors there, for instance, have to come up, put themselves together, and begin to look for a political party of choice. They can now come together and see how they able to get power to come to their zone. Otherwise, Southeasterners South South belong to all political parties. There is no, I'm, I don't know which political party does not have a Southeasterner, whether it be a leader of thought or a leader of that party. We, we do have. I'm not sure that there is any political party that does not have a Southeasterner or anybody in general from the South. No, I, I can't really get you, but the point I was trying to make is that, you see, there are two major political parties in Nigeria, the PDP and the APC. As it is today, you can see that even the PDP have allowed party, you know, to go any part of the country, which simply means that the highest bidder will eventually take it. If the people of the north are able to get their, their act together, then they'll get the, 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 the other part of the country to support another candidate. If it is the person from the south that is able to put their act together and play the, the normal politics that everyone will understand, then of course the power shift to the south. But as it is today, Everybody wants to take a club out of the whole system, not necessarily allowing, you know, power to deliberately shift. I think that's the problem we're we we having today. These two major political parties are just watching the step the other party is going to take. Some are saying that, especially the PDP, they are saying that it is the turn of the North to actually take it because Obasanjo have done it, uh, Jonathan have done it, so it is for the North again to come back and take the ticket. What APT is saying that, since the, the present players uh, in the last eight years have been done by the, the APC, then it will naturally go to the, to the south. But one very salient issue here that normally people will not want to play out easily, which of course we know eventually is going to come out. If the APC is going to take a candidate, for instance, from the, from the south, where is it going to come from? Is it going from the southwest? Is it going to come from the southeast? If it's coming from the southwest or south or south, it means the entire south are going to produce a presidential candidate. By this, I mean that a Christian candidate will naturally come out from the south. If that happens, then where is the North going to take their, 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 their vice presidential candidate? These are the issues. So, so if that means that the North will have to decide, decisive decision now to take who actually 
you play a vice. And if you go to the northern minority who call a free state, you should not do what they call federal character because I have had other sections are saying that Muslim Muslim ticket is not going to play out. If Muslim Muslim ticket is not going to play out, it apparently means that in, 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 in not a, a Christian minority from the north will have to come out to vie with the with, with the southern candidate now. So these are the issues. That is where real politics is going to play out. For PDP as it is today, we know that they are clamoring for another candidate, which of course is apparently going to be a Muslim candidate. Then of course the south now, either southeast or southwest. We'll not be looking for a candidate that will vie for the northern candidate, which of course is going to be a Christian. So these are the issues. Yes. But what I'm saying in effect is like in all of this, what are we looking at? We are looking for a candidate that has electoral value, a candidate that can apparently get virtually every at least forty five to fifty percent or two thirds. So so I'm, I'm sorry, the, I'm sorry, Mr. Idris, I just I need to come in there. You seem to be talking about the mathematics of, you know, and you're talking about the votes here, which is very important. Don't get me wrong. But then at the, core of, at the core of all of this is the issue that Nigeria is facing. We have so many issues, whether it be insecurity, ethnic divisions, religious crisis, we have it all. Should we at this point just be looking at the mathematics of who can win votes as opposed to what Nigeria needs and who can unite us? Because... If we have a uniter, then we can have half of our problems solved. But then again, the question is, what should we be prioritizing now? The votes or who needs to lead this country to where we want it to go to? Yes, I understand you. I think Nigeria now should be looking for a candidate that can, I mean, that can uh, be able to be passionate. A candidate that can really, you know, carry virtually everybody, at least to total of majority of people alone. Not necessarily looking at ethnicity or religion. I'm only telling you that the same point that I'm telling you, religion and ethnicity have to play out. For instance, most of the candidates that have come up from the north have actually come up from a particular section of the north. They are not right now as it is, or some part of North Central. The northeast as it is today have been unable to produce the presidential candidate as it were. So you can see ethnicity is still going to come out. But on the larger on the, on the larger platform now, what they are looking at is probably a candidate that is feasible across board. So not necessarily ethnicity. These are the salient points that will eventually come out. That's why I was telling you that if APC is eventually going to get a thousand candidates, then where is their vice presidential candidate going to come out from? Mm. Is he going to come out from the Christian minority? Because here, you are trying to play out federal character. By this, I mean the reputation we are talking of. You cannot do a Muslim Muslim or a Christian Christian ticket as it is today because most sections will not agree. I had a particular uh, religious group saying that they will not allow for a Muslim Muslim ticket. But if that is the case, it now means that you have to cut across board and begin to look for a candidate that could match up religiously, that could match up ethnicity wise. Not necessarily putting this candidate together for one, at one, one section of the country. That is exactly what I'm trying to tell you. But I know that at the end of the day, you'll be looking for the candidate that has electoral value. A candidate who can, I mean, build bridges across board. Who can go to the south is known. Who can go to the east is known. I mean, politically now, these are the kind of candidates we are going to look at for. Nigeria is a very big country, and then of course, after you take a look at all of these political considerations, then you have to look at the game. You need to look at the economic and the security, you know, aspect of what is currently playing out today. Which candidate is going to come out today? What party can look at the present security issues or the economy? that we're having today that you can really come out and begin to look at it and turn the economy around. Mm. You know, once a candidate is able to play out like this, it simply means that they may likely take the ticket. But for today, as we are speaking, we are trying to get the candidate from the liberal political party through their, their primary mm -hmm. to get a party that they feel that once they lift somebody up, they can actually, I mean, they can be saleable in the general, general of the people. I think what, what is what most of the political parties are looking at for at this today. You made mention of the fact that both political parties are watching each other to be able to make up their minds as to what they want to do. Uh, but then it looks like the People's Democratic Party is going to have its primaries before the All Progressive Congress, which means that whatever is the outcome of the PDP's primaries will determine what the outcome of the APC's primaries, I'm guessing. But then let's look at um, the people and what the people need right now. Uh, we've seen before now that the Southerners have continuously said we want power to come to the South. And you also rightly mentioned that earlier on. Um, 
as we know that we have tensions already, how do we seal these gaps? If political parties are there to serve the people, shouldn't they be listening to what the people want? And the people here, not necessarily just members of their political parties, but people in regions, elder statesmen, leaders of thought. These, I mean, for example, um, Pandef, um, Afeni Fere, um, the Middle Belt Forum, all of these people have come out to say that they will not support any political party who brings out a, a, a presidential candidate um, from the north. Should that not be a clue for political parties to rethink their position if they really want to win? As you have you know, started um, with the conversation, you talked about the numbers, who's able to, who's sellable and who's able to win votes across boards. And I'm guessing that every political party should have that person, I'm guessing. Yeah, I I didn't really get you, but uh, if I understand what you are trying to say, probably the the geopolitical zone, you know, the position of all the uh, social cultural groups like Afeni Ferry, the Northern Elder Forum, the ACF, and all of that. If you look at all these little groups, are playing correctly. Afeni Ferry is angry for the start work presidential candidate. Why? Uh, Northern Elders Group and of course the, the ACF are probably looking at for somebody to come from the North. But again, some section and some, some certain political uh, big way are saying that power should shift to the South. They have not really come out to, tell, to say exactly where they want power to shift to. Should power shift to the Southwest? Should this shift to the Southeast? As it is today, I know that the North will not support a presidential candidate from the, from, from the East. Going by the current, you know, political or security uh, event happening currently in, 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 in the southeast. In one breath, the southeast is calling for dismembering of the country. In another breath, they are calling for inclusion of political arrangement in the country. And then again, they are talking of that. It is their thought. You begin to wonder what did they really want. In my own take, I have always said that the southeast should come out to play political games in this country. Try to belong to the party of their choice not necessarily playing ethnic or major politics as they are doing currently today. But what they should do is to look at a party that they feel that they can belong to and then begin to, you know, angle for political position. Not necessarily saying that they have to take it, they have to stampede people, they have to be killing, they have to be burning INEC offices and all of that. But I, begin to start I, to I, I do not, I, I'm like, sorry, I do not know if that's what the Southeast is really saying. Maybe this is your interpretation. I do not think that the Southeast is saying, give us the tickets. They're saying... Zone it. I, I think that that conversation, I'm guessing that conversation should be between people from the south, whether it's going to go to the southwest or the southeast. That should be a conversation be between people from the south. Um, but the way you sound, it's, it sounds like, well, we can't, we can't vote for the people from the southeast because they're fighting. Um, but can the southeast or the southerners also say the same about what's been happening in the north? We had elections hold in the north, even when there was fighting and killings. Is that a very good thing to say um, about people in the southeast because of the uprising or whatever confusion you think is happening there? Should that be something that should write them off? No, you see, for me, I, if, you, if, I, if I take Guni, for instance, I think when the southeast leaders, when there was a time they met in Lagos, they included the that the south now, uh, cutting across south, 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 east, and, 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 and south, west. They try to look at, 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 at institution where they, they may have a common candidate. But most of these meetings that they had didn't really get to the light of day uh, to assuage their feelings of producing a, a, a thousand candidate. When they met in Port Harcourt, and sometimes again in, in, in the south, east, they have to try to attempt to get a candidate, a common candidate now. Rather than look for a way of reaching out, trying to build, uh, uh, I mean, build bridges across the divide, they were talking that power must shift. So these are some of the languages that they were using that we think is not political. A, 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 a good politician will not be talking of power, power must. But shift. there have been all kinds you, of there have been all kinds of rhetorics also coming from the north in previous elections. I I, I don't think that the rhetorics would be a determinant or should be, um, you know. A, a spanner, you know, in the will of things. Should should this not just be conversational and then let the people who want to do or, or who have the powers to decide be the deciders and not necessarily the rhetorics. We've seen all kinds of rhetorics. It's in the, it's in the heat of campaign season. People would say all kinds of things, but should that be a, a deterrent for people who want to support them or people who are asking for that support to be given? Finally. 
When you understand it, what I'm saying is that it is, as, as it is today, it is a party affair thing. We are, we are not come to the general election yet. We are still talking of various political parties trying to now produce a candidate that could, they could sell easily to the generality of the people. But today, even because of trying to get a candidate from, from the primary, they are now, you know, trying to strategize by trying to put themselves together and make promises and shift ground and all of that. I'm saying that in the course of shifting ground, both the South East and the South South, they haven't played the relevant policies that people from the other divide will make it look relevant for them to begin to say it is not time for them to support, you know, a, a Southern or a South East candidate. They're not even talking of a South down candidate, for instance, like a South South or whatever. They are talking of a South East candidate. That is why I was telling you that if you are talking of a South East candidate, an average Igbo man does not as it is today believe in Nigeria. He still believes that, look at what is happening with the Kano and, and the killings that are currently going on today in the is that if they are they are decided as to what do they want from Nigeria? What? Do they still want to, to pull, pull, pull away from Nigeria one? And if they really want to remain in Nigeria, then they have to come and play politics. I don't think if I have to rule here that okay. a Southeast candidate today, President candidate, is not right enough for, for them to begin to angle for. What they could get easily and that to, that has to be also a hackling task. They have they could get, you know, right. narrowly a bad presidential candidate as it is. But All right, All right, Mr. Idris, unfortunately, we're out of time. I would have loved uh, if we had uh, Modozi here. Unfortunately, we could not connect with him. But thank you so much. Um, um, uh, Musa Idris is a, a political commentator. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Unfortunately, time is up. All right. Well, I want to say thank you to all of you who've been part of the conversation. Plus Politics returns tomorrow at 7 p.m. I am Mary Anacone. Enjoy the rest of your evening.